Welcome to First Motors in Dubai. This is the world's most extreme car dealership with over $100 million worth of cars in here. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you around. I'm also gonna pick five of my favorite cars that I'll be adding to my dream garage. Let's do this. Buy, sell, car, wow. I'd like to introduce you to Ali. So Ali is the CEO of First Motors. Now Ali, what I'd like you to do, I'd like you to sell some of these cars to me and then sure. I'll pick five of them. And you're gonna tell me what you think of each of the cars, which you think I should buy. We'll find out how much they're worth and we'll mm -hmm. tot up the total how much I spend on my five cars. Sure, so you're window shopping. Yeah, uh, no, <laughs> no, I'm actually shopping. I, I've okay. got lots and lots of money, you know. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so I wanna start with hypercars. Sure. Let's just go in, let's go in straight for the kill for something okay. really exciting. And obviously with these Bugattis here. So I'm drawn to this. It's the Supersport 300 plus. Yes. So it's the famous record breaking car, right? It is. Total 30 of these cars were made. And it is, uh, in my opinion, one of the most iconic cars from Bugatti from the Chiron series. Uh, what makes this specific car special is that it's the last one produced. So it's number 30 yes. of 30, the very last one. Yes. Awesome paint scheme as well, like the orange and black just looks so good. And the design of it with the longer tail end, you know, yes. for the improved aero for the high speed run. So I, you know, this leaps out at me. I've driven a Super Sport. Mm -hmm. It's the fastest I've ever driven a car on the road. Mm -hmm. 212 miles an hour. What's the fastest you've driven? 200 miles an hour. Yay! You, you, 12 miles an hour, okay, uh, right. Yeah. I would be drawn to this, but you have not one, but two Devos. Yes. And didn't you not so long ago have something like four? Yeah, we actually had uh, another Devo in stock in the showroom here. We sold one and we've actually sold another one outside the country. So that's uh, four Devos in total, 40 produced overall, and that will be 10% of total production that have been uh, passed through First Motors. That's a little bit greedy. Well, we actually always try to push ourselves to uh, you know, test the limits to see how far we can go. I like this kind of satin affair, that's really cool. Should I go for a Devo or the Super Sport? And then over there we have a Sport. That's a Legend du Ciel, it's a Chiron Sport. It's a commemoration to the fighter pilots, actually. Total 20 were supposed to be made initially. The exact figures are not known. Eight to 12 were made in total. So this is the rarest car then out of these Bugattis? Yes, it is the most difficult one to find. I do have a order for an additional one. Uh, but I can't seem to find one. So I've picked this at the Bugattis, but it might not be the hypercar I go for. We'll choose some others later. Is this the right choice? Well, what you're looking at is around $6 million. How much is that one? That one would be around $5 million. Okay, today. so I've picked good so far. How about the Devos? $10 million. I've picked badly then. Should I have gone for a Devo rather than this? Over long term, mm -hmm. which do you think is going to be worth the most? Overall, my favorite one is this Super Sport. The reason is that uh, this one actually has 100 more horsepower. It's 1,600 horsepower, where the Devo and the Chiron Sport or the Chiron, all of them are 1,500 horsepower. And you know, 1,500 horsepower is clearly not enough, is it really? Yeah. And, and anyway, that's the Bugattis. Yeah. But maybe I want my hypercar to be a little bit more red. So Ali, we have a bunch of LaFerraris. Yes. I understand you're a bit of a Ferrari fan. I am. What is it you like about Ferraris? Well, for the resale value and for the collector value, they actually do really well. And uh, Ferraris helped us a lot as a showroom. With the LaFerraris, most of the collectors, they're Ferrari collectors. It's also very difficult to acquire a Ferrari from the dealership. That's why uh, the resale value is actually uh, quite high. So it's a safe bet for an investment. It is Good a car bet. to drive, I've driven a LaFerrari, it is. but also keeps your money safe. Yeah, if you actually think about the car, it's a 2013 car, around 950 horsepower. It's also a hybrid. So people telling you that uh, hybrid cars don't do well as a collector value, it's not true at all. Looking at this car today, even at 2023, I mean, 10 years later, the car is quite modern for what it is. One thing you should be careful about with Ferrari is actually the battery conditions of the car. Most of the cars we bring in, they're zero kilometers and the batteries have been replaced. The drivers would be able to enjoy the maximum performance of the car. The hybrid battery costs around $300,000 and the the problem is that Ferrari find it quite challenging on uh, finding the replacement batteries. You'd have to wait around one year now. So that's why when we have the car here and somebody wants the car, they have to come here. So with these cars then, you say zero kilometers. Yeah. They're as new. Yes, they are. But the problem with that is, obviously you don't want to put miles on them, kilometers, because yeah. it will reduce the value. But exactly. then if you don't do that, then the battery goes off and then you have to replace that and that's $300,000 yeah. if you can get it replaced in the first place. The batteries go off in the first place because uh, the drivers aren't using the cars. They're not driving them or they're not- They're not drivers, they're collectors aren't They're collectors, them. <laughs> yeah. yes. And uh, you're right, it is actually quite challenging. If you take care of the cars as we do over here, 
uh, you'll have no problem in that aspect at all. But uh, Ferrari are also providing a warranty extension on the cars, which is 25,000 euros if the battery is in good condition. So all of the cars that we acquired, they do come with warranty extension from Ferrari for two years. So you have nothing to worry about and you can drive the car. I know? want to drive it, right? It's in my dream garage. I want to drive it. Yeah. We'll drive in the Ferrari and put in miles on it. I'm not going to do loads, you know, maybe a thousand kilometers a year. Yeah. Will that really cost me in terms of value? Well, the less you drive, the more valuable it will be. But, but the less uh, fun I have, Ali. The, the less, less fun. fun you have, and at the same time, you will be making money. We see this car actually going up in value. I see another 30 40% in the next year or two. Why? Ooh, so good investment. Is this a better investment, do you think, than the Bugatti? At the moment, I see this as a better investment in the long run. Why? Because the LaFerrari replacement will come out most likely this year, if not this year, the next year. And once that comes out, one of the requirements to acquire the new LaFerrari replacement is to have a LaFerrari. So everyone will come and buy these cars. <laughs> okay, right, so speculate on this because the new one's coming out, yeah. then you can sell it to someone who needs to own a LaFerrari to get the next one. Yeah, Brilliant. that's the selling point. I mean, that's how I push it. Through. Okay, so and how much then? How much for one of these? And which is more expensive, the convertible or the coupe? Of course, the convertible. I mean, it all comes down to numbers. 210 convertibles, mate. Right. 500 coupes, mate. I think I'd rather have the convertible just if I'm driving it. You can hear the noise a bit more from the V12 engine and the experience of having the sun on me as well. Exactly. If uh, I drive it in Dubai. The price on the Aperta is $6 million. <laughs> for a zero kilometer good condition one uh -huh. at the moment. And for the coupe, it would be roughly 3.5 million. I'm taking the coupe. Right, so Bugatti or that. Let's check out some other hypercars, but before we do that, can we cold start one of them? Sure you can. Come on then, let's, um, let's start up this <laughs> LaFerrari. Oh yeah, that sounds nice. Six million dollars nice. Okay, Ali, we've looked at something French, something Italian. Maybe I should be a little bit more patriotic and have a British hypercar like this McLaren P1 here. So what's the value of this? $1.5 million for the McLaren P1. It's in the same league of the LaFerrari, the 918, and the McLaren P1. We're all introduced at the same time to compete with each other. The holy trinity. Exactly. And on a straight line, the McLaren P1 is actually the fastest car. Unless you're talking about the um, value graph. Yeah, exactly. McLaren didn't do so well. Uh, I mean, not as much as Ferrari, but uh, there still is a lot of potential for this car to grow. Uh, there have been a lot of accidents in the car. For us, that's a good thing, because uh, less numbers less. <laughs> yeah. and the value goes up at the same time. I can yeah. see that this one is sold, but what would happen if I thought, you know what, I'll offer you two million? Of course, if I see that as a reasonable offer, I would take that offer to the actual owner of the car and see what he has to say. So basically what you could find is someone buys this car, it stays in the showroom, it's sold, someone else comes in, they want it, and the person who bought it has instantly made half a million. Of course, yeah. Well, less your commission, of course. Yeah, of course, uh, <laughs> we, we, we take that into account as well, and uh, that happens often. Okay, so I don't actually want to gazump somebody with their car, so maybe I need to look at another McLaren P1, maybe one that's even more exclusive. You'd have to go for the P1 GTR, which is uh, parked over there. Just so happens. This yeah. one there. So here we are then, P1 GTR, a lot rarer than the normal P1. Yeah. How many of these were built? 40 were made in total. The conversion's been done by Lazante. What do, you mean, what do you mean conversion? Conversion to make it road legal. Yeah, because this is like a track only car, right? It is a track only car. Lazante have done a fantastic job in this. And what makes <laughs> this car more special actually is the details in it. So this actually has red carbon. That's incredible, isn't it? Yeah. Would you <laughs> that like is to so good. Have a look inside. I would definitely like to have a look inside, but I may be tempted to start it. Of course. This is a proper race car in here. This steering wheel is different, isn't it, than the normal P1? This one has more buttons on it, more complicated. It's uh, actually like a challenge car. Can you get another steering wheel? Wasn't the one like There's Formula a 1 style? a rectangular one that also comes with the car. That's more for track purposes only. This is for the city. The city. Okay, so what's it like to drive? I mean, you must have driven this. Yeah. Is, is it easy No, or very no. hard? Actually, it's very challenging to drive in the street, especially if you want to do a U-turn. So I really love this car and it's super rare. It's British, but I do probably want to be able to drive my hypercar occasionally, and maybe this will put me off. Tell me the price though first. $3 million. And do you think this is a car that's going to appreciate? Definitely. I think after the McLaren F1, the most iconic car made by McLaren, and one of the best designs ever made by McLaren. Yeah, it's insane. Do you know what? I'm going to start it. And it feels like a race car. <laughs> <laughs> Hasn't been turned on in a while, yeah. <laughs> I think the Bugattis are really special. Whoa! But well, I want my hypercar to just 
have an insane feeling to it, to be an absolutely incredible sense of occasion. And in some ways, a Bugatti is a little bit too easy, and so is a LaFerrari. So I'm slightly erring on this, but there is one other hypercar which we're going to check out, which I really like, but it's a bit left field. Do you know what, Ali? The car that looks most hyper to me mm -hmm. is actually a Ford. The Ford GT is just insane looking, especially in this particular black. Yeah, actually, the aerodynamic design of this car is uh, very beautiful. If you see it, it's like a V-shape, but at the same time, it is challenging to sit in. A lot of the people that love the car are actually big and oversized. Uh, and they can't fit. I tried squeezing one of them in. It didn't work. Uh, just <laughs> that embarrassing? Sale. Uh, you lose that sale. Yeah, I did. Uh, he wouldn't fit inside the car. Let's have a look at it. Can yeah. I open it? Oh. Cold or, whoa, never sat in one of these. And it actually, it smells like a Ford and the seats feel quite Fordy, don't they? I mean, they didn't spend a lot of money inside, but it is just perfect. Well, and it's quite high. Like the roof comes down low. Let's have a look at the, the start. Wait, oh, it's gonna start it. You've had, this is the key for it? That's the key. How much is this car? $1.3 million. So it's definitely a hypercar because of the performance and it's worth over a million dollars. But that key does not say I own a car that's worth a million. It says I've got a car that's probably about 30,000. The good thing about this car is not many people know the value of this car or, or they don't know what it is. Uh -huh. So you actually get more than what you pay for. Can we start this one? Yes. So let's give it a go. <laughs> Can't you do something with the suspension as well? well? The best thing in the car is the suspension lift. It's quite instant, and if you push that button, you will know. Oh yeah? And then to drop it down again. Oh, it's very quick, so yeah. you don't have to slow down. You can just be driving along and then just boing. Yeah. <laughs> the fastest than any car. <laughs> yeah, I've never seen it. any of them do it like that, because normally the nose lift is like dick, 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 Okay, 1.3 million for this. Perfect to drive, quite smooth. And, and uh, looks the business. There's something missing though. We haven't seen any Lamborghinis. Okay, so we've got a Lamborghini Countach, which basically underneath the skin, it's an Aventador, isn't it? It is, 112 of these made. This was a inspiration to the Countach. So that's where the collector value lies in. When it comes to design and looks, nothing beats Lamborghini. But performance, uh, again, I don't know whether I should say this or not, but it's, but you're not, a say it. it's not a Ferrari. Uh, yeah. But again, the collector value is there and uh, very beautiful car. So how much is this Countach? Three million dollars. Okay, and it is just a reskinned Aventador. What's it like selling these compared to the Ferraris? Is it harder or easier? Ferraris are uh, always easier to sell, but uh, you should not underestimate the growing market in Asia. Chinese are the new buyers and uh, Lamborghini has a lot of fans in China and in Asia. So it's only a matter of time when the doors open up and uh, these cars will go flying through the roof. I quite like the look of this personally, but I think if I'm having a Lamborghini hypercar, this, is more appealing. Yeah, this is the a Veneno, Veneno is the most <laughs> iconic car, in my opinion. A total of nine Veneno Roadsters were made, and only one full carbon Veneno Roadster was made, and this is the only one in the world. This is the only one of these in the world? Yes, it is the most expensive car to be sold here, $11 million. But definitely, I would say, when it comes to looks, the most beautiful car. So how many kilometers has this particular version done? This is still zero. Very early Adventador underneath, V12, yes. 6.5 liter. Around 750 horsepower for this car. Performance really does doesn't match the looks of the car. It's actually the real life Batmobile, isn't it? The back end of it is just insane. Do you know what, you buy this car like it's art, don't it you? Is. So you have this as your hypercar, you don't necessarily drive it, you just come out and look at it and just take in, like the shapes, it's just, well, it's actually look at the back end of it. Interesting that you touched upon this. Most of these cars are also works of art. You can park them in your living room and at the same time enjoy the collector value in these cars. Do you know, when I was a kid, I used to have this like plastic Batmobile, it was about this big, I used to sit on it and push myself along. And it was sort of this shape and it had the red bits on it as well. So I'm very tempted by this in my dream world. But we've also got a Cyan here, Cyan. Haven't we? which is once again, based on the Aventador, but it's got the hybrid tech in it, hasn't it? Of till today, the most powerful Lamborghini made, around 800 horsepower. What's interesting about the Cyan is that each of them were individually colored. So you will never find two the same color. So this is unique, this car? 
Of course. This one, how much? 3.5 million dollars. So not actually that much different to the Countach. But these are different cars. That's an inspiration to the Countach, and this is a new series. Which do you think is going to be the easiest for you to sell? Well, this is already sold. So that, that one, one. <laughs> right, it's done. This is definitely easier to sell. It's gone. Okay, so that's the hypercars. So now I've got to pick which hypercar I'm going to have. The Bugatti Chiron's a little bit obvious. I do like it, and you yeah. can daily drive it. I'm drawn to that McLaren just because it's British and it's like such an experience sitting in it. But you know what? I'm going to have this. Well, you can give me your offer and... Uh, so it's 9 million, plus I've got to be able to get it from the person who's bought it. They're 11 want... million. <laughs> it's 11 million, okay. Yeah, 11 so million it's going to be at least 12 million, isn't it, for me to buy this? At okay. Least. It's all right. It's, it's a dream garage. 12 million it is. <laughs> <laughs> now let's find something a little bit more sensible. Okay, SUVs then. We've got a Range Rover. Mm -hmm. It's an SV, right? Yeah, this is an SV. Very nice. Let's move along see what else we've got. We've got another First Range edition. Rover. Is this worth le slightly less than the... It is. ...than the SV, obviously. And talking slightly less, you know, Range Rover is supposed to be like a luxury vehicle, but when you put it next to a Cullinan, it doesn't feel quite so luxurious, does it, the Range Rover? Yeah, this one's a Mansouri. Exposed carbon on the bonnet, yeah. yeah these are quite popular over here. Mansouri's a Novitex, and uh, carbon parts on the car, exhaust tuning, wheels are different. What do Rolls-Royce think of it? Well, of course, Rolls-Royce don't like it. Yeah. Uh, any car dealer doesn't like you playing with their cars, but uh, there is a high demand for it. Some people like to stand out and be unique, and. Uh, this is just one example. So what's the price of this? $750,000. The Range Rover SV? $350,000. Okay, so half yeah. that. But at the same time, you're driving a Rolls Royce. No, I think that's worth it. I think exactly. that's worth double that easily. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's a no-brainer. But let's move on. I'm not really a Mansory kind of guy yeah. for you know, a Rolls Royce. This is a little bit more... This is a Novitec. Yeah, so that's a bit more me. Similar price? This one is $600,000. Oh, I like the sound of that. But let's keep on moving. You've got another cull in there. Oh, wait a minute. I've just noticed the rear wheel arch on this Rolls Royce. That, okay. No, I'd probably keep it... This one's standard, right? It is. It's a black batch. How much is this? $650,000. Right, yeah. I'll probably go for that over the modified ones. But this looks cool. Yeah. Love the green on this G. This is the new G class. What's different in this is actually the Maybach wheels. Yeah, love those so wheels. So these wheels actually weren't quite popular in Dubai. Nobody wanted them. You know, we saw an opportunity in this. So we just decided to bring mostly Maybach wheels over here to be different than other dealers. And actually, they're quite popular now. So you started a trend? We started a trend over Okay, here. so how much for this one? $320,000. Okay, I'd definitely rather have that over the Range Rover. See, so this is quite luxurious, but I'm not keen on the look of it, especially the plastic bits down there. Well, at the end Maybach. of the day, it's a Maybach. And uh, for a 4x4 luxury driven car, one of the best cars to drive. You can have a family drive this. You're selling Ali. Would you have this or a G Wagon? I would take a G Wagon. There we go. That's all we need to know. Let's yeah. move on to the other Gs. <laughs> so, Brabus. I do like Brabus. I think they do a good job of like upgrading the cars. And they just look more aggressive, but not in like a kind of crazy over the top Mansory sort of way. What do you think? How do the Brabus do over here compared to just the standard Brabus MG? Brabus actually do really well over here. People like to be seen, people like to be different. The car is unique. G Class of over here is like a taxi. I know, I've seen so many. Everyone has one. And of course, you want to maybe stand out a bit, you would go for a Brabus. And what's the price of this? $350,000. It's all right, isn't it? Yes. Right, let's just get to the very end here because you've got a couple more. That's a standard AMG and that's a Mansouris. Personally, I prefer the upgrades that Brabus do over the Mansouris. Like, Mansouris looked at Brabus and goes, okay, they're doing that, we need to go one more. Yeah. You know, slightly bigger bonnet scoop, slightly more extreme wheels. Okay, right, anyway. Daily driver, SUV. I'm going to go for that green G-Wagon. $320,000. Let's add that to the total. Now I'm going to pick a supercar for my dream garage. So, Ali, I want something that's fun, exciting, that I can drive, you know, for a blast at the weekend. What do you reckon to these TDFs? Well, these are collector cars. For their time, they performed really well. 799 of these made, and the prices are just going up. You would have to look at something between 800 to 1.5 million dollars. Okay, so I might be put off a little bit by giving it a good thrashing on a very narrow British road. So probably a little bit too worrying for me to drive quickly, but what about something like this? Definitely fun to drive. 1,000 horsepower. So there are three motors in the car. The only setback with it is the multimedia system. Yeah, it's it's uh, quite challenging to use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. apart from that, uh, amazing car. I do like the SF90 and it is really, really quick, but I think it's a little bit too digital maybe for that full involvement. So you've got quite a few of them actually. Yeah, we did really well on these. So how much are you selling these for? Roughly $700,000. What about this? This is a bit more fun, a bit more like analogy. Well, this is the Ferrari Pista, really fun to drive. It's more like a go-kart, the experience. This one is used. This one we're selling at $600,000. Depending on the spec, you would look up to $800,000 for this car. 
Once again, that's getting a little bit too expensive for me to just thrash it around. Maybe I need something a little bit more normal than a Ferrari. How about a, a Mercedes? So we've got the AMG GT Black Series in orange, and we've got the AMG GT Black Series in orange. <laughs> well, this is the launch color of the car. Usually for such cars, the launch color is quite popular. Mercedes did produce a lot of these in this color, unlike the SLS Black Series, which was, uh, the launch color was a solar beam, quite rare, but uh, they went all out on the AMG GT. GT. Haven't you got some other AMG GT Black Series and haven't you got a solar beam yellow one somewhere else in the building? Yes, we do. We have a solar beam AMG GT Black Series, which is one of three. So only three were made in that color. One of them is right here in the basement. Another one we have recently acquired and uh, the third one, we don't know where it is. So, uh, so you've got two or three? Of course. Okay, so this car in the launch color, how much? $500,000. For the solar beam yellow? Seven hundred, seven fifty thousand. dollars Wow, quarter of a million extra because of that paint? Just because of the color. Wow, okay. Let's move down to this. We have an SLR Mick. McLaren by Mansouri, is it? Yes. Do you know what? I'm not the biggest fan of Mansouri, but I do like this. All this exposed carbon is nuts. Though I'm on a car that's fun to drive and I've driven these. They're impressive. The gearbox and stuff on them is just it's yeah, awful. It's not like quite reliable, but uh, you know the collector value will be there. Do not forget that uh, the SLR is one of the few cars that McLaren and Mercedes did a collaboration in. This one is currently listed at six hundred thousand dollars. Okay, right. No, 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 it's not for me. I actually really like this. It's an SL Black Series, isn't it? Yeah, this is one of my favorites. It's the most powerful SL Black Series made and uh, tuned by Brabus. So it's really it's rare. It's a one-off, rare, eight hundred horsepower. It's very powerful. How much is this? $600,000. It's a stealth. I like the way you've got all these numbers exactly in your head. You know every single value yeah. of every single car in here, right? Yeah, I come here every day. I mean, this is all I do, so uh, <laughs> and the prices. Do you ever get it wrong? It's quite rare, quite rare, but it does happen. Have you ever sold something under value because you got the price wrong? Uh, and you've been like, oh my maybe God. Maybe in one or two cases that has happened, but a word is a word. And if we do that deal, the, the sale still goes through. I don't think these are quite pure enough driver's cars. And I think the Black Series might just be a little bit too extreme for the road. So let's find another collection of supercars. So we have some Lamborghinis. You know, these are more for show, I think, than outright driving. Unless you're talking about the STO. I really find the STO good fun to drive. What's the price of this one? $400,000 for this one. STO is the best performing car of Lamborghini. Definitely great to take it on the track but again if you want presents you go for an SVJ. So in terms of sales this is gonna be harder to sell than an SVJ. Yeah these aren't quite there yet I mean the feedback and the reviews not so great on the STO but SVJ is flying through the roof. So we've got another hurricane here moving down to an Aventador SV and then you, do you know what, I prefer the look of the Murcielago than the Aventador, don't you? Yeah, this so is cool. a Murcielago SV. Only five of these were made without the wing, and three of them were made in black. Definitely there's a collector value on this. Total of, I think, 350 Murcielago SVs built. This one is $600,000. Thing is, though, I'm looking for a driver's car. This is not really what I'd class as a driver's car. Let's find something else. Now, this is what I'm talking about, Ali. Porsche 911 GT2 RS Club Sport. Amazing driver's car that you can't, unfortunately, drive on the road so I can't have it although I really want it. Yeah total 200 of these made they're actually going up in value quite a bit 40% up <laughs> since the last year definitely an amazing car to drive on the track but again you do need a team for this car <laughs> and I would say it is a rich man's toy. You can't have that and this it's good for cruising around in and it's fast it, it, it is fun but it's just not quite on it enough I don't think. You know for Europe it's the best car to drive it's discreet performance is there reliability is there that's a great thing about porsche you can rely on it flat six so you don't have to spend as much on petrol i don't care about petrol prices in my dream garage but that's not quite hardcore enough but now this is if you want hardcore and danger and some excitement <laughs> yeah, i would yeah, yeah. Uh, advise you to go for a 765 <laughs> definitely so much power in this car more than what the shell is built for these are with the comfort seats those are with the race i go racing seats and i like this seats. color as well although red is pretty cool in red but i think i'd rather have it in this gray here i've actually driven this car and it is mental drove at silverson completely crazy absolute handful but whoa, what an experience maybe too quick for the road but I can always dial it back a bit and maybe I should go in black. What do you reckon? Which do you think is the best color for resale? Me, I just love black and uh, this is actually a special black. It's not black, it's black with gold dust on it. So if you look at it from up close. Oh yeah. Very beautiful spec. 
So what's the price of this? Five fifty thousand dollars. You just thought about that. How much? How much shall I charge you for this? Well, okay. I know three hundred thousand dollars is one point one million dirhams. Okay. So uh, okay, that. you did the maths in your head. Yeah. Right. And I am going to take as my supercar this black with gold fleck McLaren seven six five LT. Excellent choice. We're now in the basement of First Motors, and there's even more cars here and some classic cars. So as part of my dream garage, I think I need something that's very collectible, you know, an older car that's really gonna appreciate in value. And what I'd like you to do is just tell me the value of these cars and give them a rating from okay, good, and excellent for their ability to make me money. And so let's start with this. Lamborghini. I will put this as good. It's a GT400. At the end of the day, again, it is a Lamborghini. Definitely one of the best classic Lamborghinis made. This one's at $600,000. So when you talk about making money, where I bought this car six months ago, it was for around 400,000. And the value is going up. So uh, just shows you. <laughs> a collectible car that will go up in value you buy as a NASA, it doesn't have to be that old. I guess the McLaren Senna is a good example of that. Yeah. 500 of these cars made in total, renamed actually after Senna, the famous Formula One driver. Red carbon, full exposed carbon body, and uh, 500 of these made in total. In terms of value, like the ability for it to appreciate in value, what is it, okay, good, or excellent? Well, for such a car, you'd have to pay 1.5 million euros at the moment. It will go up in value at the same time, because full carbon body, quite rare to find. Okay, let's find something else that's quite rare. All the cars you've got here have some collector value, and we've already seen some MG GT Black Series, but this one in particular has an ability to go up in value more than the others. This one is only allocated to you if you have an AMG one allocation. 275 of these made in total. What's special about the car is only the paint job. And uh, these stars by Mercedes, these are all hand painted. So highly recommend when you get this car to get a PPF and uh, <laughs> very beautiful. It does look really good, the, this paint scheme, but the value, so how much is this worth? $700,000. And in terms of the ability for it to increase in value, what do you rate it as? I would give it a good. So everything so far is good? Yes, uh, the reason for this is collector value is not only in the car, it's also at the paint job. This is already quite up in comparison to the AMG one. It's uh, roughly 50% more expensive at the moment. And again, it is a black series, but you would have to wait some time. Instant returns in collector value, you'd have to wait quite a bit on For this, this car. Still at the okay, so we've had some goods. I want some with collector value that you rate sure. as excellent. So we've got another car that's made more collectible because of its paint, but this is even more so than the MG Black Series because this TDF, the color is one of one, isn't it? It is. And what's special about this car is not only the color, it's also the kilometers and the condition it's been kept in. Most of these cars, whether it's the TDF, the Speciale, or the 599 GTO, these are Jubilee cars of Ferrari. So basically having these cars in your profile will entitle you to other cars. Definitely a collector car to have. 799 of these made. Okay, so the price of this? 1.6 million. 1.6 million, but the collector value, it's excellent still, because of the color. Still, it's a V12, it's a naturally aspirated engine, and it has a lot of potential, a lot of room to grow. It's still quite a lot of money to buy in the first place, even though you will make a huge sum on it. Is there something maybe a little bit more affordable? Yes, there is. So this is a little bit more me, Ali. We've got a Mark IV Supra, and we've got an R34 Nissan GTR. In terms of investment, one of these is excellent, one of them's good, which is the excellent? Well, this is an M-Spec newer. What's special about this car is everyone is waiting for the US markets to open up in 2024, when these cars are actually legalized. You have a lot of collectors, speculators, stocking up on these cars and uh, refurbishing them. And what's beautiful about this car is actually the driving experience. Even though it's uh, not so fast, you feel it's fast. And uh, the prices, I would say, in the last year, they have doubled. So from $300,000 to $600,000. Not only Italian and German cars have the collective value, also the Japanese cars. And if you don't have a big budget, you can buy these cars from anywhere between $150,000 up to millions. What's interesting is that this Nissan is actually a better investment. It's more likely to make you money than this first generation Ferrari Testarossa here, which fun fact, you can tell it's a first generation car because it's got the mirror on the A pillar rather than on the door like later cars. Now this is feeling like a proper old school collector car, this 300 SR Roadster. What's special about this car? Is, uh, everything. Is everything. Is the history associated with this car. I'm sure you know that the most expensive car sold currently at auction 
is the 300 SLR, which got sold for over $140 million. Now what happened after that auction is that all the cars in the 300 SL series, all of them went up in value. I would say a 20% increase in the prices of the cars. Now this one is valued at currently 1.7 million euros. Definitely good collector value on this. A lot of history associated with it and a lot of uh, room for it to grow potentially. You said good investor value, but I need it to be excellent. Is this excellent? Depending on how long you want to hold it, but I would say yes, it is excellent. Why? Because we're moving from combustion into electric, and these things will be a thing of the past. Okay, I quite like the idea of this, but there's another Mercedes we could potentially have, which is a Roadster yet again, which I think could be a good collector, but you'll have to tell me if I've got it right or not. Okay, let's go have a look at it. So, Ali, here we have a Mercedes McLaren SLR Sterling Moss. And I think these cars are a really good opportunity for going up in value by quite some margin. They're not cheap to begin with. This one's like $4 million they right are, now. Yeah. The thing about this, though, is it's one of the first cars in the modern era to be windscreenless. McLaren copied them with the Elva. You've got the Ferrari Monza after this. Yes. And there's only 75 of these built. It's an insane car. And there's the link to Sterling Moss as well, which as far as I'm concerned as a Briton is one of the very best racing drivers ever, even though he never won the world championship. And I think the investment value on this car is excellent and therefore, you should buy it. I did a good job. Could I, can I join your team now? Mm, maybe. When we're talking about investments, a Ferrari F50 has got to be a no-brainer, right? It's got to be an excellent. Definitely one of the best cars from my childhood. You know, I had a poster of this car on my wall and I definitely wanted to bring it here. What's special about this F50 is 349 of these were made in total. This is one of the Jubilee cars from Ferrari to commemorate the 50th anniversary. Prices are going up really high. When we bought this car, it was the most expensive car ever sold in an auction for around 3.5 million euros. But today you're looking at 6 million euros for this car. So you guys have made 2.5 million on this car? Well, not us, we sold the car and the new owner, he made the most money. <laughs> There's a common theme here, is the people who buy cars through you end up making the money. Okay, excellent investment value, even though it's worth 6 million, it's gonna go higher. Yes, it definitely will. Excellent investment choice, this car. So excellent investment choice, but do you know what I'd like? Something with a very excellent investment rating. Okay, let's go have a look. Ali, you have my favorite Ferrari ever here, and I think this is the car to have as my collectible car in my dream garage, 288 GTA. Yeah, definitely you found the most challenging Ferrari to find. It's the- <laughs> It was the easy to pie. find, it was just here in the corner. <laughs> Not for me. <laughs> yeah, it took me over a year to find this car in this condition. It's only 8,000 kilometers, 272 288 GTOs made in total, 1985 car. From the 272 actually, only 22 were made with the electric mirrors and with the AC makes this car even more valuable. The value of this car today would be 6 million euros for the condition it's in. So 6 million euros, that's about 6.5 million dollars. And in terms of the investment value, this is the best car that you've shown me. When you look at the predecessors of uh, this car, if you look at the 250 GTO and it's trading somewhere between 50 to 70 million euros today, this car definitely has a long way to go. Okay, I'll take it. Definitely I'm taking this. I love the look of it and I like the sound of that kind of appreciation. Well, uh, happy to do business with you. Finally, Ali, we come to my fifth car choice for my dream garage. I've been looking at some of the luxurious cars that you've got here, like that Novitech Rolls-Royce yeah, with the widened rear wheel arches. It's nuts. And then there's that Rolls-Royce Silver Spectre, which is an estate Rolls-Royce Wraith. That's crazy as well. But do you know what? It got me thinking about like the Rolls Royces and luxury cars. And I think what I need for the last car in my collection is something to be driven in rather than to drive myself. And we've ended up in this Maybach with a difference. What is it? Well, this is um, upgraded and tuned by Mansuri. The interior has been upgraded completely by Mansuri. Mansuri make one of the finest lever interiors. And also this car has been tuned to 720 horsepower. It is really nice in here. It feels super expensive and even more luxurious than the standard Maybach, which is saying something, isn't it? Yeah, of course. You stand up with this car, definitely. Uh, you don't see much of these around in Dubai or anywhere in the world. What is the price of this one? $550,000. I wouldn't say it's a one-off, it's one of a few. All right then, Ali, that's my five car dream garage complete. What does the total value actually come to? Yeah, that's just $20 million. Whoa! <laughs> I see, write this down. It's a uh, Veneno, 765, 288 GTO, G63, and a Mansuri Maybach. Matt's gonna buy all of these cars. It was just pretend? What do you mean? You've been taking my time all this time. I think I better get out of here. Ah! I hope you'll enjoy the video. If you did, give it a like. 
Let me know if you agree with my choices in the comments below. Click on those windows there for some more videos and on that box there to go to CarWay to sell your car and have dealers all across the country bid on it. Thanks for watching.